Rudolf Steiner. Hi there. I've been meaning to do this vlog for a long time. I wanted to do a simple introduction to Steiner because I think he's a hard person for most people to um, approach. My original intention was a breakdown of his book uh, Philosophy of Freedom which I thought was probably the, the best introductory book to Steiner. This book. Uh, but it's morphed into something else. Um, so I actually have uh, a set of Steiner books here that I think uh, are the best way of introducing him. And I'm going to start with this one. Gary Lackman's uh, Rudolf Steiner, An Introduction to His Life and Work. For anybody who hasn't come across Steiner, in fact for maybe someone if you've read one and, and tried it and, and got bemused and didn't know where to go. Um, this is the place to go because it tells Steiner's story, the story of his life, but it also uh, covers a lot of his ideas and it's really readable. So this is the most readable um, approach and it, Steiner's story is really interesting. You know, he's born into a basically a, a relatively poor family. You know, he doesn't suddenly burst out onto the scene. He, there are a number of um, really interesting things um, that happen with him. Uh, one, he gets to be the tutor of um, uh, a boy that is 11 or 12, or might even be as old as 14, and unable to read and um, thought of as really backwards. Well, Steiner uh, took this boy and had to uh, create sessions for him that were no longer than 15 minutes because that was as, as long as um, he could get concentration. First he took him so that he matched um, children of his own age and then um, I think he became a, a doctor. But so, you know, when you read that, you know, well, there's something about this person, that, that Steiner I'm talking about, uh -huh. that's exceptional. Uh, another feature that really comes out is the way that he engaged with people of different views. He um, was often thought to be advocating positions that were really quite antithetical towards him. And that's because he engaged with them. I'll bring that point up later, but... Steiner went on to edit Goethe's scientific papers. Goethe was a key figure for Steiner. He represented both the um, scientific mind, the artistic mind, in one person. An integrated culture and personality where science and art work together. And so he was always a, an important figure for Steiner. And then the Waldorf education that Steiner set up. So um, it's interesting because um, you know, the Waldorf education came from uh, its factory owner who was wanting to set up education for the children of his workers. Steiner devised a system of education for, for him and it was independent. So Steiner didn't oversee the education. He just gave them the ideas, the methodology, the way of teaching. And the Steiner education never taught Steiner's ideas. Um, they taught Steiner's way of teaching. And then there was the biodynamic farming. Again, farmers came to him and asked. <laughs> So biodynamic farming was also something that came out of Steiner by some farmers approaching Steiner about how to use their land. It was never a system that um, Steiner set up that he controlled. So then came Theosophy which became Anthroposophy and people are probably more wary of, of that aspect of it. That was something that Steiner was the head of. I think there's something like 600 lectures, uh, book, books of lectures by Steiner that he gave to the Anthroposophical Society. The other thing is that uh, for the Anthroposophists is that they bought, uh, built uh, two Gertinums, uh, one first one of wood and the second one uh, was concrete when the, the wooden one was burnt down. That's interesting because um, uh, it showed another side of Steiner where um, he was involved in the architecture of this 
this building, well, particularly the first one that was built down was uh, just gorgeous, but the, the second one also is a, a really interesting structure. Uh, within the second one there is a large sculpture that uh, Steiner was responsible for. And then um, they put on plays, I think they, they put on um, Goethe's Faust uh, on a regular basis, um, but Steiner also wrote some uh, mystery plays that were performed for the Anthroposophical Society. So again, that's this book, uh, a really good um, overview of um, Steiner's life, and I think you'll find that um, it's an interesting character and uh, well worth reading about. I won't go much into this next one, which is Steiner's own autobiography. Um, so obviously that covers a lot of similar ground, but um, it's from the inside, you know, Steiner's own view. Uh, one of his most readable works, and uh, I wouldn't recommend that as the next one to read, because you've already covered his life. Um, uh, but I would recommend that as one of the key books to read. Now I think the next uh, place to go is this book, The Essential Steiner, edited and introduced by Robert A. McDermott. So this gives a good overview of all of the different streams of Steiner's thought, which I think is, is uh, really key. And not only that, it gives a good general introduction and it gives a good introduction to each section. And I would really recommend that you don't just go to um, the Steiner text, but read the introductions uh, first. They are really good overviews. And uh, especially given that uh, it's a reasonable sized book, but you know, uh, this is a, a tiny selection of uh, Steiner's writing and thought. So, um, the introductions flesh that out a few bit. And now this is where I was going to start, The Philosophy of Freedom. It's one of his first books. Um, prior to starting Anthroposophy or, or talking to the Theosophists. So, so this is really a um, philosophical work, I mean, obviously by the title Philosophy of Freedom. Uh, this is a key book and it, it's probably the, the first full book that I would recommend um, reading of Steiner's. It's interesting in that, like what I was saying earlier in regard to the Latman book, where Steiner always engages um, with other people's thoughts. Uh, there's a lot of responding to current thought of the time. And it gives a good insight into um, Steiner's mind. It's, um, it's a bit of a challenging read. I think none of Steiner's books are easy, but none are um, prohibitively hard either. Um, so the basis of the philosophy of freedom, I think, is two questions. Uh, on what basis do we have knowledge? And is there personal freedom? I won't go too much into it, but at, at base, um, Steiner is rejecting what are often considered the basic dichotomies of our knowledge that we have subject object and so forth that they are the basis. What Steiner regards as the basis and uh, I think he's, but what Steiner regards as the basis and it makes a lot of sense to me is concept and percept. So percepts are things that stream in from the, the senses and concepts uh, like chair, table, tree. These are the things that we make sense of them. And without both concept and percept, there are no arguments to be made. I mean, that sounds kind of straightforward, but a lot of people, I think, sort of don't digest that argument. And I think there's a, um, there's a lot of implications that come out of that, that uh, concepts are are part of the bedrock of our knowledge. Not just our knowledge, but the way we experience the world. So the other part is, uh, do we have personal freedom? Um, you know, it gives the example of uh, the baby crying for, for milk. It's uh, inspired by its hunger. So in, in a way, 
you can't say that that baby is free. So the baby is not free. But what about the person inspired by altruism or their personal desires? At what point do they become free? Now, uh, Steiner does uh, think they become free. Now, free individuals. I don't think I've ruined a plot for reading this. Um, overall, I'd say it's a really good book to experience. It's a, a, a very good intellectual exercise to read this book. It's probably one that needs to be read multiple times because in some ways it feels like um, what it's saying is kind of so obvious that you don't notice. Um, and I think it is uh, uh, truly revolutionary. It's an experience to read it and uh, I highly recommend it. Uh, associated with that is this one. Uh, a theory of knowledge implicit in Goethe's world conception. Um, it's a bit shorter, it's written um, a little bit before Philosophy of Freedom, but it covers a lot of the, the same ground and um, just if you're tired from reading Philosophy of Freedom. This is a sort of shorter version um, um, with s slightly different focus um, uh, while worth reading. And then the last one I'm going to um, recommend uh, is this one, Theosophy. So, so this is probably the best introduction to his anthroposophical ideas. Um, all I'll say really about this is um, it shows the, the same mind that is in philosophy of freedom. The, uh, obviously a highly in, intelligent man. Uh, but it, it's, it's now talking about spiritual vision openly. Um, so that's where people start to turn off. And I'll, I'll I actually read a quote <laughs> that I, I think is important from another one uh, as to how we should take it but basically Steiner is saying um, it's well worth thinking about these things I'm not trying to convince you um, you don't need to be convinced but engage see how those thoughts develop you know Steiner saw a three-part breakdown of the human being uh, body soul and spirit the body relates to um, you know, the, the sense impressions and so forth. Um, the soul uh, relates to our direct relationship to them. So our antipathies and um, pleasures from uh, those experiences. And now the spirit is the highest level where truth dwells. So it's where we try and see um, the things around us in relation to one another rather than just in relationship to ourselves. Um, so that's a, a breakdown that I think anybody can engage with even if they're a, a, a materialist. Those make sense. So, Okay, I want to finish off with a, a quote from this book. Uh, oh, on a lecture in an aspect of the social question. Uh, I, I should also mention that um, uh, Steiner is um, a Christian after a certain fashion. Uh, so he's saying how we have to come to the mystery of Christ. And, so, and how can I achieve it? The one and only way is this. Instead of taking an interest merely in my own way of thinking and in what I consider right, I must develop a selfless interest in every opinion I encounter, however strong I may hold it to be mistaken. The more a man prides himself on his own dogmatic opinions and is interested only in them, the further he removes himself at this moment of world evolution from the Christ. The more he develops a social interest in the opinions of other men, even though he considers them erroneous, the more light he receives into his own thinking from the opinions of others, the more he does to fulfill in his inmost soul a saying of Christ which today 
must, which must be interpreted in the sense of the new Christ language. Christ said, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these brethren, you have done it unto me. Uh, so I, I think that's a, a, a great attitude uh, and really um, in a world where uh, opinions seem to be becoming uh, increasingly polarised, uh, that's a, a really good approach to um, try and understand, uh, seriously try and understand those of opposing viewpoints to yourself. And I think Steiner in his life uh, uh, really did that and uh, I just think that it would be great uh, if if people applied that same um, interest in Steiner himself there may be things that uh, about Steiner's thought that on the surface puts people off but I think um, he's well worth thinking about thinking is such a key aspect to Steiner and it I think there's a lot to be gained by engaging with Steiner's thoughts. So I hope that's uh, served as something of an introduction to Steiner. Thank you very much. <laughs>